Hello everyone and good afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever you might be in the world. My name is Gerard Gregg and I'm the founding chief executive of Tech Nation. I hope you're having a great London Tech Week. Today, I'm really excited to be talking to Shirley Rodriguez, who is the deputy London mayor for the environment and energy as part of today's climate tech event at London Tech Week. I'm really looking forward to this conversation as Shirley has used over 20 years of her environmental expertise to tackle air pollution across London and across the UK, and has gone on to introduce a whole range of initiatives to help London reach its net zero goal by 2030. In her current role, Shirley has created low emission bus zones in London, expanded the ultra low emission zone, introduced charges for old and polluting vehicles and cars, She's also overseeing the delivery of Energy for Londoners program. Before her role as Deputy London Mayor, Shirley worked at the Children's Investment Fund Foundation, where she helped establish their cities and climate strategy. I'm particularly excited about our conversations today because tackling climate change is something I feel very passionate about and a cause which is really important to us at Tech Nation. At Tech Nation, which is focused on building a resilient tech community, we're actually encouraging all tech companies to sign up to the Tech Zero Pledge, an initiative to help tech companies set an ambitious net zero target by the end of this year in the run up to COP26. We're also, we've also launched an, our net zero growth program for climate tech companies who are working on technology that helps to decarbonize our atmosphere as quickly as possible. So Shirley, it's fantastic to meet you obviously virtually. How are you and where are you speaking to us from today? Uh, thank you, Gerard, for having me talk at this year's Climate Tech. I'm actually in City Hall today um, in, in the centre of London. So yeah, looking forward to our conversation. Terrific. Well, thank you so much for making time from your busy schedule. Um, I, I'll start with my first question, Shirley. You've been working to tackle climate change issues for nearly 20 years. What sparked your interest in this topic? Because clearly you've been one of the early pioneers in this space. And why does it continue to be a focus of your career? Well, that is probably more than 20 years, actually. And it started with um, uh, a focus on the environment. Um, my, my early career was working in uh, London local authorities. So it was really um, about how do we improve the lives of um, London's communities in the, in the local authority areas that I was working in. And they were coming to uh, their, their uh, local authority, the council, to say, you know, we want to improve the environment, you know, clean up our air, clean up the water quality, um, you know, litter, all of those sorts of things. And then over time, um, the focus of the environment got uh, you know, stronger. So we had the Earth Summit, for example, and I was working at that point on a London Agenda 21. And there was a big push for, you know, setting indicators and targets, you know, a bit like you were talking about setting your the Tech Zero target for, for, for the COP this year, because really people wanted to understand um, that the people were making progress, that they and and the various agencies, authorities had a plan in mind and, and what were we going to do. And then Climate change was sort of a feature of that, but it was really more about air pollution and water and, and waste and so on. But then uh, obviously we had the Kyoto Protocol mm -hmm. discussions around that time and increasingly um, the IPPC, uh, IPCC uh, reports, which were really setting out the very scary um, uh, evidence that, that things were, you know, were, weren't going well and we really need to tackle climate change. So all together, that plus the Sustainable Development Goals has really meant that uh, that sort of sparked the interest and the focus has really been on on the outcomes how do we improve the well-being the environment um people's sort of um outlook essentially um tackling uh, environmental problems and it sounds as though there's been a sort of you've done a lot of work in a lot of areas you start mm. as you started talking about your the bit at the beginning of a career working with local councils I mean, which piece of work or which pieces of work have you done which you feel have had the biggest impact so far on on our climate crisis and and what can we learn from what you've experienced? Um, I mean, I could talk about sort of individual programs like the Ultra Low Emission Zone, which is a phenomenal um, piece of work in London. I could talk about a bit more, but I guess more generally it's about really working on the importance of cities 
um, uh, and and the institutions that work in cities. So not just the mayor of London, but all of those stakeholders and actors that make up a city. Um, and getting that really on the map for um, a number of people, whether it's private foundations like CIF or um, governments, um, really understanding their importance to the delivery of, of environmental goals. So on climate change, for example, well, you know, my, my very early career at the GLA um, under a previous mayor, um, we have set up the C40 cities network. Um, and at that time it was 18 um, cities um, you know, really thinking about climate change and what what must we do. It's now grown to 94 mega cities, and I've been lucky to be involved with them at their various stages, either as a city or as a funder. Uh, I'm now on their board and and so on. And and that has seen the difference. I think people really understanding if you're going to take action, it has to be um, at a local level um, with um, the necessary funding and powers. And when when you have that leadership. At city level, things do happen. And even where there is not, not the powers, those city mayors or authorities have a convening power and can bring stakeholders together, you know, whether it's tech uh, entrepreneurs or businesses or through to the community or or just local authorities, um, we can really take action. And, and, and I think putting that on the agenda for national governments is, is critical. And that's really what we're all working for at the moment. So it sounds as though your leadership uh, capacity is very much about convening as well as setting targets and initiatives and programs that you co-agree with everybody. Is that correct? Yes, that, yeah. That's right, because actually the, the mayor of London, um, you know, the the, num the the sort of distribution of power that the mayor has has grown over time, you know, over the, the mayoralty since 2000. Um, but, you know, if you look at all the different mayors that form part of the C40 or even in the UK, we all have different powers and um, levels of funding and so on. Um, so really that leadership and convening power is is absolutely important um, because it brings people together. You want people to to be inspired and want to to do well for their cities, but also for their own agenda, you know, whether it's businesses making uh, more profit or communities seeing, a, you know, better social cohesion um, and so on. In terms of climate, you know, we have a massive amount of uh, emissions that are due to the fact that everybody, you know, most people in the, in, in the world live in cities. So, you know, energy emissions from, from our cities, consumption emissions. So where can we do um, the most good and the fastest is probably by focusing on those those areas like, like cities. Um, you know, massive Im impacts on our economy, for example, the C40 cities um, alone, I think, drive about a quarter of the global economy so that's a phenomenal amount of influence that could be had if you can change um the approaches of those city city members you know 100 cities essentially that's great and so what would you say are the three biggest challenges facing cities major cities but also in particular london at this point mm. So uh, a couple of them that are common to everybody, every city finance, you know, that is yeah. such a key issue for cities. Um, you know, in London, we uh, developed a one and a half degree action plan um, to, to show how we can meet the Paris Agreement and what that might cost in London. And at the time we did that, uh, we were working to a 2050 goal. Um, the mayor has accelerated that because of the the, the growing you know evidence and impacts of, of the impacts of climate change. Um, and that we estimated cost in the order of 60 billion pounds. Um, the estimates are much more than that. You know, if you start to get to detail, now that we've accelerated the target, we're updating that, that financial modelling. Um, but what is absolutely clear is that whilst there is more finance going into green financing, there is not enough going into um, cities, um, essentially. And the public sector can't do this alone. We need that mix of public and private investment and the financial flows to be flowing uh, essentially and you know the mayor has done a lot of work about arguing for for pension funds for example and others to divest from fossil fuels and reinvest that money into into sort of greener infrastructure for example so finance is a big big problem for mm -hmm. us um, and we're working on um, a new financing facility in London. You know, how do we capitalise on the fact that the City of London is on our doorstep? Um, you know, lots of uh, institutions are making moves now, but how do we accelerate that and how do we help support cities like London uh, to, to access the, the, that financial flow? And that that's really good to hear obviously it make it, you know capital and, and finance can make a huge difference what, what, what role do you see 
technology playing, and in particular, obviously, UK technology companies in, yep. in helping London's journey to net zero over the next few years? It's it's so important, um, you know, whether you call it climate tech or green tech or clean tech, you know, yes. what, what we need are the products and services to help change people's behaviours, but to make it easy for people to understand. And that's really where, you know, your strength is, I think, um, you know, that we talk about moving to or transitioning to a low carbon and circular economy um, and we're seeing all the time now I don't know if you've seen the recent polls you know lots of polls now saying that the UK um, and actually global citizens are saying they want action on climate change but they want help in, in how do we do that so they want um, you know the tech companies for example to provide us with the the, the ability to um, you know make it easier for us to find um, an electric vehicle charge point for example. Yeah. How do we um, manage our energy um, demand in our homes or or even just, you know, where do we find, um, you know, a, a shop or a business that is selling us something that we want that we know is, is sustainable, is, is, is um, you know, helping um, to meet, for example, the mayor's ambition for a zero waste city. Um, so you have a, a massive role to play. And I think. You know, we we do provide some support through through the mayor's um, agencies and programs. You know, trying to connect the sector together, helping entrepreneurs um, through the recent pandemic. For example, we provided sort of um, grants to help people sort of carry on. Um, you know, uh, sort of with their businesses through this really difficult time and come up you know, with new innovative business models. And that's the sort of work that, that you know, um, you know, through tech, you know, through this Climate Tech Week, for example, is going to be really helpful and really important for us. Um, but a big issue is, is how do we also use um, um, the sort of tech sector to help meet the mayor's other objectives? So, you know, at the same time, so how do we create social value? How do we make sure that the tech sector really represents the diversity of London's um, population, you know, that there are more women in clean tech, there are more black, Asian and minority ethnic entrepreneurs there, you know, really developing those solutions for that sort of systemic change, those new business models that, that you know, that are needed. And have there been any good examples in that regard? Because that sounds really interesting and, and very much needed, obviously. Oh, lots of examples, um, you know, for example, I can't put some names to them, but, you know, for example, like, you um, um, connecting people up to um, uh, understanding where um, you know their charge points are. You know we have a chief digital officer now, Theo Blackwell, who's helping us with with um, you know uh, getting that that sort of um, digital exclusion agenda being addressed. We're looking at how we might use um, apps to get people to understand where poor air pollution is and, you know, how might they use that to either alter their behaviour or use that for advocacy and lobbying of local authorities or, or indeed the mayor or government to have policy changes. Um, we've helped fund, you know, um, entrepreneurs to look at sort of alternatives for um, um, tyres or a huge um, source of PM 2.5, which is a very tiny particulate, which really exacerbates um, uh, lung problems, you know, it, it sort of leads to air pollution. So what are the alternatives as we move to more electric vehicles to reducing that part of air pollution, uh, uh, that contribution to air pollution as well? So so lots of examples. Have a look at our website. We have um, a sort of clean tech website, Better Futures, lots of examples of those sorts of um, um, uh, businesses that, that we're working on. I mean, it should be said that London was one of the first cities really to open up as many of its data sets as possible so that you can uh, you know, foster an ecosystem to develop around companies and app developers to create useful, as you said, you know, apps that can change people's behavior. I mean, a good example is City Mapper. I think that's yes. that. That you know, for those people who don't know, City Mapper you know, gives you a very sort of uh, you, great user experience in allowing you to use public transport or, or various other forms of transport, like uh, like boats as well, like a, because obviously we have a river here in London. So uh, just to make sure that we, re, you know, and gives you a, sort of as much advice about how to lower your carbon emissions. Uh, but I think that London, just for people who may not know in the audience, but uh, the, the 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 mayor of London and 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 his team also spearheaded the, the the London data store, which is where you can find all this data for you as a developer to 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 use and actually develop new applications for people who, might, who may want to use it. And I guess 
in your in your role as deputy mayor, uh, Shirley, you know, how do you explain to people tackling environmental challenges? How do you make it a high priority for them? Because obviously, it is a high priority on your agenda. But what, you're obviously convening lots of various constituencies from the 32 or so boroughs. You know, what? How do you? What? What is? How is that going for you in terms of making it a high priority, as high as possible, given that housing and education are clearly just as important? Um, well, the mayor has been absolutely clear that um, we cannot have um, a recovery, for example, from, from the pandemic, an economic recovery, without it also being a social recovery, but also it has to be a green and just recovery. And, and so he has been really clear that they're they're you know they're all related and interconnected yes. um, and we have set up um, for people who don't know it in in London a, a recovery board which the mayor co-chairs with the the head of the sort of uh, organization that represents the London local authorities um, and we've brought in a number of stakeholders from the CBI through to Transport for London through to um, other organisations that represent communities and other sectors in London, academia and so on, to really um, show a big focus on how do we help London recover from the pandemic, keep some of the gains, you know, it's a horrible thing to say that, you know, that there were some some positives out of from the, from the pandemic, but you know, people will have noticed the clean air and and quieter streets yeah. and so on. But, but you know, how do we keep that whilst um, um, looking at the good growth of London? Um, and that means looking at our environmental challenges as well. And under that recovery board, we have a sort of series of missions around how we might focus our activities on. One of them is a Green New Deal mission, and that is saying that we need to double the size of London's green economy, which includes all you know the tech sector, um, by 2030, precisely by looking at environmental challenges, you know, tackling the climate and ecological emergencies. So by tackling air pollution, for example, um, uh, and so on, you know, that that we can create the new green jobs that we need, retrofitting our city, for example, to reduce. Um, emissions from our buildings is going to need a different way of construction for new buildings, modern methods of construction, which requires a whole new industry to look at that. But retrofitting our buildings will need people who, you know, the, the sort of traditional retrofit um, companies will need to lead new skills to understand how to retrofit, for example, solar panels onto old buildings. Um, you know, how do we mend repair electric vehicles, you know, that that's a sort of new new approach. So those are all things that, that we say, look, th these will bring jobs, you know, th these are, um, these will bring better air quality. And these are all things that people are telling the mayor they want to see in London. And that's, I think, the biggest thing. And of course, we want to make sure that f people feel empowered. And so we do a lot of work with not just stakeholders, but schools and, you know, you know, faith communities and, and so on to show that tackling uh, environmental issues really bring benefits to their, their their locality. I mean, it sounds as though this is going to require a lot of collaboration between the private and public sectors yeah. um, to really tackle this this social challenge, which is really transcending boundaries and, 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 and borders, frankly. So it's amazing to, to hear my, a lot about this uh, from you, Shirley. That's great. I guess, conscious of time, I, my mm -hmm. final question uh, is, you know, what three pieces of advice would you give to any city-based business looking to reduce their carbon footprint and help meet the objectives that you are setting yourself? <clears throat> well, I think, you know, in your introduction, uh, you you mentioned it, you know, we, we have lots of advice on our websites and, you know, um, I was briefed on, well, if you can see, try seven. And I was like, we don't need seven. I think the, the main thing is, if you don't already do it, measure uh, your, yes. your greenhouse gas emissions. Just analyse where your big sources of emissions are. You know, for some companies, it'll be their transport. For others, it'll be the building that you're in. Um, then set yourself a target, because without setting yourself a target, you know, you're really, and, you know, trying to come up with an action plan. And there are lots of sources of advice, as I've said. Um, our business hub has some advice. We're running some um, programmes. Lots of organisations do. But then get yourself a plan to start to reduce those emissions. Um, um, so those are probably the two bits of, of advice. And I think just because um, we're about to expand the ultra low emission zone in October, um, it's nice. really about making sure your vehicle uh, emissions, you know, that, the, the, you know, whether you run a fleet or whether you use um, 
other people's vehicles, you know, trying to reduce their emissions, whether it's, you know, trying to get them to net zero, you know, so electric vehicles if possible, but at least, at, you know, sort of you less compliant. So that's Euro 6 or Euro 4 petrol, because that has huge benefits in terms of air pollution, but also, um, you know, leads to, to jobs as we create the new industries and, and, you know, new vehicles of the future. Shelley, it's terrific to have you as a Deputy London Mayor for, for the environment and energy. We're so lucky to have you as, as our leader in that regard. So it, it's been an absolute pleasure speaking with you today. And I think you're right. It's going to take every single one of us as individuals or as a company to really kind of measure ourselves as we go through this journey that we're all going to be on together. So thank you so much for your time. And thank you to the audience for tuning in. And I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. Shirley, any closing remarks? No, well, just just thank you for all the work that you're doing. Um, this is a fantastic week. You know, this is I can't remember how many years this has been going, but this year this year of COP is so important that, as you said, Gerard, everybody does their bit. It does rely on us all. But you know, you you've got the innovation and the you know the the mindset to really help us deliver. So please use us. Please do help us. If you need any advice or contacts or whatever, you know where the GLA is. So do please contact us. That's great to hear. Thank you so much, Shirley. And with that, I shall say thank you so much to Shirley and for everybody for tuning in. I hope London Tech Week goes very, very well for you. Talk soon. Bye bye. Thank you.